Rise 2.0 is here. We're obviously all in full swing, hunting the new monsters and powering up our hunting ranks, but the update does feature a lot of little but important details you really should know about. So welcome back to Rage Gaming, my name is Solo, and here is 10 things you absolutely need to know about in the 2.0 update. Let's get started immediately with the first one, which is very importantly, a heads up. Your sets from before this update might be less viable and less relevant due to the new decorations that have been added. Thanks to this new list and roster of decorations we can craft, we have much easier access to powerhouse skills like weakness exploit, crit boost, handicraft, and more, which provides us with new ways to build our sets. This is great news for the meta, which gives us lots of ways to build an experiment compared to the more limited form we had before. But yeah, this does mean everything you were wearing might not be ideal anymore, so get ready to update your armor. But who gives us our new decorations and what are they? Just by logging in, you'll have new decorations you can craft with the update, and then new decorations from each new monster you defeat. Most importantly though, I would say you need to know about these. We get Master's Touch from Teostra, Handicraft from Kushala, Good Luck from Camellios, and obviously, super importantly, Crit Boost from Apex Rathalos. Just those alone are going to have a massive impact on the meta. But to actually craft many of these new decorations, you're going to need the new Lazarite Jewels and lots of them. Fortunately, these are rewarded at the end of high rank hunts. We're currently seeing great drops of these Lazarite Jewels from Apex hunts and Rampages in specific. So if you're looking to farm them, that should be your best bet. Now, you might be wondering, how do I unlock all of the new monsters and when will I get to them. It's all tied to your hunter rank which is now unlocked. Starting from hunter rank 8, you'll be able to hunt in the open Basil Goose, who's back, and Apex Azurus, who is the first of many Apex monsters just in normal hunts. But with that, we also have in the Rampage, newly added Apex Rathalos and Apex Diablos. The Rampage quests reward massive, massive chunks of Hunter rank XP, so if you're looking to farm, I would recommend that. From there though, once you hit the first cap of Hunter rank 20, you will then unlock the urgent quest for Camellios. Defeating Camellios will then put a new cap on your Hunter rank, which will be 30, which will then, once you've reached that, unlock the urgent quest for Kushala. Finally, after you defeat Kushala, the last cap of Hunter rank, which will be 4, 40 is next, and that will then unlock the urgent quest for Teostra. Now then, we gotta talk about layered armor because it is back. Thankfully, it works in a simple way. Via yet another ticket system, you can get yourself outfit vouchers and exchange them for various layered armor. Importantly here, they have given us everything, including all the new sets in the update. So there's no awkward and annoying stunted release of the sets like they've done in the past. We can just craft and layer all the sets in the game. To get yourself these outfit vouchers, you just need to complete any high rank hunt. You'll get varying amounts depending on the difficulty of that hunt though. Harder hunts like Apex Monsters can provide, or Rampages are another great source. You can get a whopping seven from either the Diablos or Rathalos Rampages, provided you do well in the Rampage and get a high rating. Some layered armor will require various monster parts as well, and more tickets. But overall, it is an easy system and pretty forgiving. We should be able able to get everything we want with no issues. All right, so here's another heads up then, another important one. They have raised the cap on armor upgrading, so be sure to immediately go upgrade your armor defense even more, using those piles and piles of armor spheres you have no doubt lying around now. And you can get this all the way up to level 11 now, giving us a nice defense boost on top of what we previously had. This is all the more important when you're fighting the new Apex monsters and the new Elder Dragons, because these guys hit really hard. Any advantage to help you with that should be taken. Moving on then, did you know about the two new petal aces that have been added? They're nuts, they're a higher rarity. We get two new quests from Fugan in the village. This is a blaze among beasts and mate fire quell fury simply go out and complete these two quests and then you'll find the two new petal aces in your equipment box these are the absolute petal ace and the underworld petal ace i think absolute is the new default petal ace for most because it has better stats than the previous default hunting petal ace while providing raw benefit to everything in equal measure. It is really good. On the other hand, Underworld provides similar stats and is a huge upgrade from what we had before, but has less health than Absolute, but provides more stamina instead. Certainly good for those using weapons that consume lots of stamina, like say Jewel Blades or Bow, but ultimately the Demon Petal Ace is still the best option for raw damage increase, since it still has five more attack than either of the new Petal Aces, and of course, 
course, it will provide you with extra attack when you pick up Spirit Birds. The difference is a lot less now though, and unless you're looking for the absolute most damage possible at the cost of anything else, I'd recommend you go for one of the two new Petal Aces, because they just have a lot of stats. Next up, the new SNS. The poor SNS was weirdly left out of the new fun weapon designs in Rise. The crazy and silly ones like the Teddy Bear Hammer or the Corn Gun Lance. Some of these new silly designs were actually really strong, and the new SNS is one of those. This is a request you'll get from the merchant to go capture a high rank Magnum Allo in return for the SNS design. Check out the stats on this thing high raw damage with only green sharpness, but wow. 100% affinity, what? If we were to combine this weapon with, say, the Master's Touch skill to cause no sharpness lost whenever critting, which would be always, and then Handicraft to improve that sharpness, then damn, this is a really good SNS. Plus, visually, it's really cool. It's got that ninja sword and then this subtle bracelet that works as the shield. Very cool, very effective. Congrats to SNS users. Okay, for our last things, you should know a few important details. Firstly, the talisman bug is apparently fixed. If you were unaware, some players had been holding off on melding talismans due to this bug. Basically, they were getting the same talismans in the same order and wasting their materials on melds. This is now apparently fixed, so you can go ahead and start melding again if that was a problem or fear for you. And then on top of that, there was also that new DLC pack they've added, DLC Pack 2, which provides a lot of little details and additions if you do want to support the game further. There's new voices to use on your hunters, so you could sound like Fugan or Minoto if you're a super fan of either. There's new hairstyles, face paints, background music, there's new gestures, stickers and poses. Most importantly though, there's the new cosmetics like the Hunter Pirate Layered set and the Pala Ko and Pala Mutant Kohu outfits. With the ability to edit your character with the new edit vouchers too. It's all fine, I think the pirate outfits are great and the stickers are always really really cute. They're just expressive and there's always really nice artwork with them. They're probably my weirdly favourite part of this pack. But there you have it, those are my 10 things you absolutely need to know about in this 2.0 update and as a little funny bonus there's a weird bug that people are talking about right now with the new Utsuchi challenges which feature a royal Ludroth and Juratodus. They just happen to look really similar to Almadron, Zinoga, Gosarag, Rajang, Magnamalo and Nagakuga. Incredible what Ludroth and Juratodus can do these days with their new ability to shapeshift into other monsters. It's a weird small bug that I'm sure will be updated soon, but it's something a lot of people have been mentioning to me. Either way, I hope this video was useful or interesting to you. If it was, hit like to support the channel, let me know that I should make more videos like this one. And if you have any good tips for players about the new update that wasn't included here, then just drop it in the comments, you might help someone. Until next time then, I've been Hollow, you've been you, and thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye